What's up, guys? It's Big Luke here, Freedom of Mind, Money, and Media. And you know what, Ruben? That's a perfect segue in, right? So Ruben and I were just here. Ruben's my producer. We were trying to get this this show started, right? And every time I went to start filming, something would happen. The door would get knocked on and somebody would come in asking a question. And just now I had a great flow going. For those of you who don't create media content, it's sometimes hard to get the creative juices flowing. Uh, uh, and my phone rang. Like three seconds into the show, my phone rang. And, you know, I was frustrated for a moment, but I thought to myself, you know what, maybe this is uh, this is a good thing. Maybe I can talk to people about this uh, because it's a perfect segue into today's topic, which is taking action, okay? I have so many friends, so many people near and dear to me that drive me absolutely bonkers. Why? Not because of who they are or, you know, attributes that they have, but because of their behaviors. For instance... I think it was two days ago, one of my friends came up to me and said, man, you know, I've always admired the fact that you're huge. I've always admired the fact that you just commit yourself with an insane, murderous work ethic to the gym. You're a monster. When you walk in the room, you command attention. People just respect you when they see you. And I want that. First thing I did was say thank you for the compliment, right? That's a very nice thing for somebody to say to me. Do I know that I have a big stature and I, and I tend to gain attention when I walk into a room? Yes, I do. And it's that way by design, okay? But he didn't have to pay me that compliment, and I appreciate that. And you should let people know that you appreciate when they say things nice uh, to you as well. I digress. But he then followed it with, on January 1st, my New Year's resolution is to get huge. I'm going to get just like you, man. I'm going to be in the gym for two hours a day. I'm going to put my body before everything. I'm going to diet like a fiend. I'm going to take whatever supplements are necessary. And God damn it, by the end of the year, I'm going to have a 34-inch waist. I'm going to have round shoulders. I'm going to have at least a 350-pound bench. And I'm going to be so built that I'm worthy of coming to your home gym, Big Luke, and working out with you. And I said, what the fuck is wrong with you? And he looked at me and he was like, what are you talking about, man? Because he was bewildered. He thought that I would meet these comments with this congratulatory hug. I said, why wouldn't you just do that right now? Why are you waiting until January 1st? And he didn't have a good answer for me. And there never is a good answer to that question, okay? New Year's resolutions, as far as I'm concerned, I appreciate the idea, right? I, I like... Um, the idea behind it, that I'm going to pick a date and I'm going to do something that spurs positive change. I'm with that, guys. But there's one major flaw in the whole New Year's resolution uh, category, and that is that you're putting it off. It, you're literally deciding to make a positive change immediately followed by procrastination. Okay, I'm going to make this positive change in my life but I'm not going to do it until at least one, two, three weeks, one, two, three months from now, whatever the case may be. And I just can't wrap my head around that. Okay. Now I understand why. Okay. People don't want to do difficult things. Okay. It is intrinsic in us as human beings. That's why goddamn Fortnite is so popular. That's why Soda is so popular. That's why energy drinks have become necessary for today's society because we just continue to sit on our lazy ass and binge watch Ozarks or Yellowstone or I couldn't even tell you any other ones because I just don't watch that much goddamn TV, okay? But the fact of the matter is this, guys. I'm not here to browbeat you. I'm not here to make you feel bad. You know, half of you guys are listening to this saying, you know what, fuck you, dude. You think you're better than everybody else? The fuck I don't. I don't think I'm better than anybody. I think my behaviors are different than everybody, with the exception of few, okay? Uh, there was a guy, he was a, a social media guy and a bodybuilder. Uh, his name was Rich Piana, and he has passed me. He rest in peace. He lived a very extreme lifestyle. And uh, I pay homage to him, any of his friends, family that might see this episode. He had a lot of influence on my life, and I, I encourage you to check out his stuff. But I speak on him because he had this idea. He had this team, Team 5%, right? And it's because he believed that only 5% of the people in this world, in this lifetime, are willing to do whatever it takes to reach their goal, right? Are willing to do, and that was like one of his taglines, whatever it takes, right? And I think, by and large, he was pretty accurate, okay? He was accurate in the fact that of only a very small percentage of people are willing to do what it takes to reach the end that they're after. But I would have to disagree with that gentleman when it came to the number. I think it's more like 1% or 2 
okay? And we could talk about the alignment of the 1% being the richest population in the world and the fact that only 1% or 2% of the people in the world are willing to do whatever it takes to reach their goals. There might just be some synchronicity there that nobody would want to really admit because nobody wants to admit that it takes hard motherfucking work to get things done, right? At a high level, you can sweep your kitchen and it doesn't take much energy. You can uh, get in your Tesla and drive to Whole Foods and it doesn't take much energy. You can, um, you know, work a full day as a lot of Americans, you know, with an eight hour job that doesn't require much physical labor and not expend a lot of energy and still accomplish tasks. But you'll be exactly that. You'll be the guy in the Prius driving to Whole Foods, which there's nothing wrong with that, okay? You could be the guy who's working the, you know, $15 an hour, eight hour a day, 40 hour a week cookie cutter job. And it's important that you understand that I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But if you're one of the people that has that burning desire, okay, if you're one of the people that just wakes up in the morning and says this normal day-to-day shit isn't for me, okay, you might want to consider the fact that you are a, a, high production, a high productivity person, that you're an intense personality, okay? Uh, and these people know who they are. The ones that are listening right now that have this within them, they know exactly who they are, okay? Um, and again, does that make them right? No. Does it make them wrong? No, most definitely not. It just makes them a little bit different, okay? So I'm not gonna separate people in this show. I'm not gonna try to put one person against the other, anybody above anybody else. But what I can tell you is when you sit back and you see somebody own 10 Lamborghinis, a private jet, properties, you know, multiple homes to live in, designer clothes. There's two things I can tell you about that person. One is they have low self-esteem, okay? Um, They have uh, some deep-seated emotional need to be uh, validated, right? You don't buy a lime green Lamborghini because it's a necessary piece of your car collection, right? You buy a lime green Lamborghini because you want people to see a lime green fucking Lamborghini, right? So that type of person requires the looks. They require the likes. That's why the majority of Instagram, YouTube, social media that you see that gets tremendous um, engagement has to do with big tits, fat asses, fast cars, um, people jumping off things and hurting themselves. Let's, let's, let's speak on that, right? So what are the, the highest, most trending videos on, uh, on you know, social media? There are people breaking themselves, you know, parkour guys missing the mark and jumping to their death, people in squirrel suits hitting bridges on the way down, girls on Instagram shaking their asses and letting their tits hang out in a fashion that if their daddies ever knew, their iPhones would be in the fucking swamp across the street, right? There are guys doing so much gear, gear, steroids, for those of you who don't know, uh, and swelling their muscle to the point where their skin looks like it's going to tear. Meanwhile, bench pressing more weight than their joints can even handle because they're on so much uh, supplementation with with uh, exogenous hormones, but they're doing these things because that's what the human mind likes to see. Okay, the human mind likes to see extreme. It likes to see crazy. Okay, it also likes to see sex, drugs, and rock and roll, which is why the music, the tits, and the drugs do it every time. All right. So I digress, guys. The topic at hand here we're talking about is taking action. Okay, I can promise you something. Okay, if you want to see improvement in your life. Okay. If you want to finally get that sexy girl, okay, or guy, if you want to finally get that fine automobile that you drive by every day on your commute and is in the showroom window of the dealership, but you've sworn that you'll never have it because the payment must be $1,000 a month, okay? If you want that body that when you walk in the room, people just stop talking, they tend to glance over, and men get slapped for looking, and women get yelled at for staring, okay? If you want things in your life that are better than what you currently have, you must be willing to take more action than you ever have before, okay? We all know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is, right? This guy has a quote, and I lived by it for a lot of my hobby bodybuilding career that helped me get to what you see here today. And that was, if you want to get bigger and stronger than you've ever been, you have to lift more weight for rep, uh, more repetitions than you ever have before. And it's very fucking simple, right? So why does somebody get fat? Because they start binge eating shitty food and they start eating more than they've ever eaten before. And conversely, they start doing less exercise than they ever have before. Their metabolism slows down and they get fat, right? Why does 
the X Games skateboarder win the gold medal? Okay. Does he get out there and does he do the same routine that he's done last year? Does he do the same routine that Tony Hawk did in 2001? No, he does something different. He does something better. He or she does something that is progressed beyond what the mind sees as normal or the current standard of good. Okay. Guys, it takes hard work. It takes discipline. Okay. You don't look like this and there's people that look way better than me, okay? But the, the, what I've got here is taken dedication, okay? It's taken hard work. It's taken um, substantial amounts of my time, okay? And it, it's, it's taken just freaking discipline, guys. You don't get here without kicking the shit out of your body and eating more food than you're comfortable with and supplementing in a way that's not familiar to you and experiencing pain, Okay, guys that look like me know that you wake up in the morning and everything hurts. It's sore because in order to build muscle, you must tear. Okay, the people who have reached financial freedom, okay, people who are at that place that you wish you could be, right? They can go out to eat every night of the week if they so desire. They can go to the mall and if they see something in the showcase and they want it, they don't ask how much it is. They just say, do you have my size? Okay, if you want that, you must be willing to increase the input, okay? I can tell you this, guys. My life underwent a drastic change at one point, okay? And I get into that in other episodes. And very briefly, for those of you who don't know me, I was once very addicted to drugs. I robbed a bank. I went to prison. I got out of prison. I started making better decisions. I started focusing on my mind, my body, and my spirit to some extent, I guess you would say, from, from a moral compass standpoint. But... The most important thing is I made decisions and I took action, okay? And I began to behave in a way that was night and day, black and white, one and zero, different than the way I used to behave in the earlier part of my life. And in the early part of my life, I lived paycheck to paycheck. I rented an apartment. I drove a mildly cool used car. And I was inundated with debt that I couldn't afford, okay? I was not what you would consider a successful human being. But I also had a pattern of behaviors that were ill. They were just things that I had developed and learned along the way because of a lack of good mentorship, uh, poor decision-making, and uh, you know, no intervention by people who had experience to tell me that what I was doing was wrong, okay? It took me going to a very dark place in my life, a place that... I don't ever want to go back to a place that I don't wish on any of you. I certainly don't wish on my children and I don't wish on my worst enemy. Okay. But if there's one thing that you can do in this life, guys, that will better your position and will always serve to benefit you, it is learn from somebody else's mistakes. Don't watch somebody go to hell and back and then make the same decisions and mistakes that they have. That's why I'm here, guys. I'm really a nobody. Okay. I don't know any Kardashians, okay? I don't have a private jet yet, yet. And uh, I wasn't born into royalty, okay? I'm just a motherfucker that decided that I was sick of the status quo. I didn't want to live a life of normal. I did, and there's nothing wrong with that, guys. I, I stress it over and over. Normal isn't bad. Status quo isn't bad. If you are eating, sleeping, breathing, feeding your family, taking care of your kids, not cheating on your spouse, paying taxes and being productive, you've got it nailed far better than a lot of people, okay? But I'm talking about that desire to do just a little bit better, okay? I'm talking about that desire to create. I'm talking about that desire to leave your mark on the face of the planet or on the souls of people and to try to inspire people to get better or to simply reach a point in your life that you are proud of, a point that you want your children to to be familiar with. You want them to look back on and say, holy shit, I'm so proud of my dad. I'm so proud of my mom. Or more importantly, when they're giving their award acceptance speech later on in life, or they're accepting their doctorate degree, they say thank you to you, their mother or father, because of your inspiration, because of your creation, because of your ability to push through the status quo and go above and beyond, they're thankful for you because it paved a road for them. Okay. I didn't have that. I had a father who loved me and a mother who loved me and they did the best they could, but they were not particularly remarkable people, okay? But what I can tell you is this. If you set that 
that map, okay, if you create that road, if you are that role model to your child, it will make a difference, okay? And for some of you out there that are parents right now that are watching this, you're thinking to yourself, well, I, you know, I really don't need to do above and beyond. I don't need to go crazy. I don't want super levels of success. I'm, I'm pretty good where I'm at. Maybe your child does. Maybe they want you to influence a little bit of positive change on them. So all I'm saying is this, guys. Maybe you should reach down and turn the knob up a quarter of a turn, just a little bit, okay? I'm not telling you to take steroids and get in the gym or bet your fucking 401k on the next penny stock. I'm not saying that, guys. I'm not saying that you should take unnecessary risks or that you should put yourself or others in danger. What I'm saying is, from personal experience, I can tell you that by administering positive change and increased input, Okay, immediately, not at New Year's, not for a resolution, right fucking now. If you start making positive changes in your life, okay, dial up your breakfast just a touch, maybe a couple egg whites instead of an egg McMuffin, all right? Maybe instead of going to bed and watching three hours of TV or a half hour or whatever it is you currently do, dial it back just a touch, get to bed a half hour earlier, excuse me, wake up a half hour earlier, try to get a run in before you go to work, whatever. I think I've made my point very clear, okay? It's very simple, guys. If you increase the input, you will receive an increased output. As always, guys, I empower you to positive change. I try to bring you value and I try to speak on things I know about. And I would not be here today in this studio in front of this camera trying to inspire positive change in you unless I could speak from personal example and tell you for a matter of fact that if you work harder, if you try harder, if you input more, your life will get better. Mine did a hell of a lot better. So, as always, I thank you for your time. I appreciate the fact that you tune into this channel. Like, subscribe, whatever. Support us in any way you can. And we appreciate your comments, guys. Tell us what you think of the videos in the comments below. Let us know what you'd like to see us do. Other than that, guys... Just work a little bit harder, dial that knob up just a little bit, set a little bit more of a positive example, increase the input so you can get the benefit of the increased output. And more importantly, stay free.